Hello and welcome to our latest in a range of regional near me webinars for primary care and general practice. Um, great to see uh, folk here this afternoon. And again, appreciate the time that you've taken to, to out of your busy work days to, to spend some time with us now in this webinar. And um, it's all very busy at the minute. So uh, we appreciate that you're joining us. There will be a Q&A session later on, and the session will also be recorded. So if you would like to share this with colleagues afterwards, or there are people you know who weren't able to join, then you can uh, get that through the same joining link later on. And we will send out a package at the end with all the links that are shared today and uh, websites and contact details. So what we'd like to do really first is to, just to find out where people are from. So if you can see the Q&A on the, the side of your toolbar, just put in where you're from and maybe what profession you are, just so we kind of get a feel for, for who's in the audience today. Right, gonna just go through a quick, some housekeeping rules. So basically everybody that's joined is on mute today. Um, please use the Q&A section on the right hand side of your, well, wherever it is on the toolbar on your device. Uh, and again, if you come across um, examples of answer to questions that other people have posed, then please share those. And also, um, if there are particular examples of near me that you're experiencing locally, then we'd be great if you share those as well. You'll find some accessibility options as well within your toolbar, so you can subtitle the presenters as they speak, and you can also change the settings on that as well. If you do unfortunately lose the broadcast, uh, please just rejoin. Uh, and if you have problems with sound or vision, sometimes rejoining will fix these for you. Also, um, uh, just rejoining with audio only will sometimes help. So again, if you're near a good Wi-Fi signal or you can plug your device into uh, a network using an Ethernet cable, that sometimes helps as well. So we're delighted we've got a, a, a packed schedule for you in the next hour. So my name is Mark Bezik. I'm the national lead for the Near Me Network. And I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Burke, who is the program manager for the Technology Enabled Care Team. Uh, Rachel's going to be monitoring the Q&A and pitching those questions later on to our panel. I'm delighted to have with us this afternoon, uh, Scott Jameson, Dr. Scott Jameson. He's a, a GP in NHS Tayside, but he's also the Executive Officer for Quality Improvement in the Royal College of GPs. We're also joined by Dr. Alan Stewart. He's a GP in Path House Medical Practice, NHS 5 and also Dr. Neil Service from South Queen's Ferry Medical Practice, NHS Lothian. We'd very much like to engage with you on social media, so please follow us at NHS Near Me and also myself at Mark Bezik AHP. And we are using some hashtags today as we uh, progress through this live event, and you'll see those at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we're being ably supported by David Bath for the National VC team as producer in our team's live event today. So basically to set the scene as we strive to offer near me appointments as a choice of patients, we'll be looking at how this has been integrated into primary care practice across Scotland and, and also be honest about some of the challenges that have been faced and how some of those have been overcome. And then we'll have uh, some time at the end for some conversations with you and the panel. Um, if there's anything else in the chat that you'd like to add in terms of topics, that would be super. And without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Dr. Scott Jameson now for uh, an, an introduction of the national picture relating to video appointments. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mark, and thank you for asking me to speak at this webinar again. Um, it's been been a great pleasure to, to to support this, and I'm the, as Mark says, Scott Jameson. I'm a GP in Kirrimuir, also working in out of hours. We're in the NHS Tayside, but. I have another role within RCGP Scotland. Um, I'm the Executive Officer for Quality Improvement, and it's been a, a privilege to support um, mainly Mark's predecessor, actually, in a lot of the work that we did to try and and really help um, move the, the project along. And uh, this was so much more than than just providing the the, the, the login and providing the, the 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 structure and providing the kit. We are a, a relationship based profession. We, we, we work with patients and we work with patients over a long time. 
and the enormity of the ask that was pressed upon us to 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 start to use near me is quite different and i think it's quite challenging for for us as as as, as gps um and, and in primary care more widely um i i really do miss um uh, seeing patients um i really miss seeing them in person and near me is is a different thing uh, to that it's a different uh, approach with every uh, challenge there's opportunities and and um, referred to in some contexts as, as silver linings and and of course even before um we started in the covid pandemic there was there there, there were large providers of 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 online gp um services these were these had a difficult time. Um, RCGP, um, it's, it's, it's not without, uh, it's, it's widely known that we, we, we had uh, sponsorship at one of our um, annual conferences from one of these uh, providers. And that was, the college found that hard um, because the membership were, 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 were split between those that wished to support that kind of engagement and those that felt that in relationship-based care, how would that work? Uh, and and I think it absolutely can work. And what we can show uh, here through a national program is that, in fact, if we get the infrastructure right, um, we can still have accessibility for those that wish to interact with us um, in this format and um, still maintain um, list-based, relationship-based uh, care. With regards to, to what we've done as, as, as a college, we, we, we did discuss this at length and how we could wish to support this and how, what we would do to support it. And what we, we, we did was we worked collaboratively with the RCGP uh, uh, Scottish Council and, and myself facilitating that. Um, we had some practices piloting it and working um, you know, in practice, how do you deliver this? And the outcome of that was a collaborative piece of work we did with Near Me, and uh, I'm sure Rachel can put the, the link to that in the chat. Um, but we produced a, a, a guidance document that really helps practices consider how to do this. And for me, the, the, there's been a few kind of key moments where, where kind of re recognizing how to how to move this on. Um, and I'll, I'll summarize those to, 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 to first of all, look at the public engagement. Um, the public engagement document was really, really important. Um, 5,000 respondents, and it really helped show that actually the way to think about this is not necessarily what we will, as clinicians might gain from this, but what the public will gain from it. And when you looked at the public consultation, the public were so much more in favour of it than I ever expected. And I, I kind of had to really think about this and, and think, well, you know, for me, you know, a lot of the conversations I have on near me didn't gain me much from from, from from a telephone consultation and therein lies the problem. I was thinking about, did it gain me? And, and that was just the wrong way to think about this. What did it gain the patient? And what it gains the patient is a level of engagement that's just both um, overt and also um, uh, subconscious with the person that they're talking to. And I suppose I then reflected on it a little bit like talking to your mum on FaceTime um, or other nearest relative that you may have. There is something about it that engages you differently to a phone call that you, you just makes you feel more engaged with what was happening in that conversation. And for a lot of the things that I was missing through the Corona uh, coronavirus 19 uh, pandemic, that's, that's, that's what it filled. Um, and it offered, it afforded patients choice. And, and we're really acutely aware as a college about digital poverty and health literacy issues. There's now 650,000, I think, near me consultations happened across the UK. And most certainly there is work to do to make sure that everybody is afforded access to near me. If you're going to see a tertiary care specialist within Glasgow for your gender identity or your cardiology appointment, why should you not be afforded a near me appointment in the same way that somebody else is through health literacy or digital poverty? And we need to work on making sure that people who can't access those tertiary centres or can't access that outpatient appointment on it for whatever reason has accessibility options within their community. Um, because I think it is a really good way to, to, to reduce carbon footprint, for example, 
And people might not want to spend an entire day going down to the Golden Jubilee, because believe me, for my patients, it is, a, it is more than a whole day trip to get there and back um, um, for, for, for their appointments. And, and if, if, if they wish to do it on near me, we should, be, we should be offering that. And I think we need to offer this as a choice. Um, as a college, we have no preference um, of near me. We don't think it is the preference of choice, potentially, for, for, for how you consult, but it certainly needs to be a choice. Um, this morning I did a, a whole surgery of, of near me and that's what we do. We do pre-bookable near me as, as our standard pre-bookable format just now. If somebody can't can't do it by, by, by near me, we switch it to a telephone. And if we need to see them in person, we switch it to a telephone. But these are 15 minute slots. Um, and if somebody needs seen, so I'm, I did uh, uh, four near me's and two attends in person, three phone calls. It, complete choice. It was the most appropriate outcome for, for the person. It lets us pre-book work and it lets us know what's coming in and it stops us trying to firefight on the day demand. We're absolutely keen that this is an option for th some things that somebody can do, but it has to be a choice and it has to be something we afford as a choice to our population. We know that people want to do it and the public consultation is clear that there's a proportion of people that wish to do it that way. Um, I'm thanking Mark for his really hard work ongoing, taking it over, over from Claire and uh, to the team for doing that. And um, nothing more from me. I would normally stay on for the uh, for the Q&A, but I, I got some home visits to do, sadly. And for today, unfortunately, Mark, I'll have to bow out here if that's OK. I hope that gives a good national overview from where we've come from, uh, a national picture. And uh, uh, my grateful uh, for your ongoing support to it. Thank you, Scott, for that. And, and yes, I appreciate that you've got uh, demands on your time there. So, so yes, I think, again, Scott talks about collaboration and piloting and, and, and choice and, and issuing guidance for, for folk to follow. So all those resources are out there uh, and, and interesting to see how you've managed the logistics of the pre-booking side of things. So that's that's been super as an example of, of real life uh, action into practice. So I'm delighted now to introduce uh, Dr. Alan Stewart to you from Pathhouse Medical Practice in Fife, and he's going to speak about his near me experiences uh, where he works. Thank you, Alan. Sorry, Alan, I think you're on mute. Somebody's muted me. I'm unmuting myself. Yeah, that's much better, isn't it? <laughs> I'm Dr. Alan Stewart. I'm a GP at Pathhouse in Kirkcaldy. So we are a five and a half doctor practice, OK, and 11,500 patients. Uh, we live in an isolated deprived area with a really high SPARA score with a lot of elderly patients. So we were really early adopters of the Near Me consultation programme back when the pandemic kicked off, we started it around day one, almostly when somebody threw a whole lot of laptops at us and told us, there you go, happy days, get on with things. And our experience has been extremely positive from day one. It's been a, a really great tool, which has helped both us and our patients to kind of give access throughout the whole of the pandemic thing. And we're planning to move forward to use it when we start going back to more of a bookable system. I'll give you just a little overview of kind of what we do just now. At the minute, because we're a great big practice, we've got one partner still at home. Uh, we are running what used to be called advanced access. Basically, we will see and manage everybody who phones today without having a lot of people waiting. That has its own challenges because it can be quite variable. Mondays, Tuesdays is unsurprisingly really busy and it kind of tails off and lots of different things. So we use video, telephone, and face-to-face. -face. So at the minute we're doing about 10% video, 25% uh, face-to-face, -face, which is probably around about the national average, and about 65% of the rest are all telephone calls. And that's our go-to standard first to begin with, unless they fulfill one of the criteria that we have when patients pitch up through the admin team, they have a list of things that are suitable for both telephone, things that are suitable for video if the patient wishes, and things that require more of face-to-face -face things. And then depending what we get through telephone, we can move that on to a video if we think we need to see them that way or change it to a face-to-face -face appointment. And that gives us a choice of different modalities to use, different ways to manage patients. And a lot of the time they find that very more satisfactory than just a telephone call because as Scott said before, people get a whole lot more out of seeing our ugly mugs than you actually think that they do. And sometimes just seeing 
a human face, somebody who can just nod, say you and say, yeah, no, that's OK. That makes a huge more difference than actually speaking to people on the phone. But, you know, telephone is probably the go to for most things. What we did at the beginning, we for, for the near me one, when it all came out, started, we got our admin people to start playing with it themselves. So th the best way to get it up and running is to let your admin team be able to use it as a person or as a patient to know where the, the failures are, the, the problems that might come with it. So we spent a whole couple of days just letting them phone in because you can do that. You can just set them up and they can phone in and they would video conference themselves. They'd go through all the checklist questionnaires. They'd go through all the IT checks that go with it. They'd see what would work and what wouldn't. And they became really comfortable with that really quickly because they've done it from the other side. So therefore, when somebody phoned up, they could say, oh yeah, that happened to me. Oh yeah, you just press this button. That's what you would do. And therefore, it made it much easier for people to get in, in touch with that. So they were trained to begin with and they did all the dummy calls. We used to have a please off you jaw well pop to the website and press the near me button to enter the waiting rooms. So, but we found that that was a real challenge for a lot of people because it's another step. So in the waiting rooms now we send direct links to patients, phones and emails. So therefore they just click on the link on their device, which means it's one step less removed. The less steps that they have, the less problems that they can get um, and actually access and what we need them to do, which makes it much easier for us at the end of the day. Um, a lot of the discussion we have is the staff will go through it step by step for them. They will answer all the questions when they're in the waiting room. There's a lovely patient information leaflet, all the information's on it about them having to be on their own, about the confidentiality things. So it's all right where they're sitting listening to the lovely music. They can get through all those things that were with that tells them what to do should their Wi-Fi drop so they don't panic, so we can just refresh the screen because nobody's going to go away. They're told it's not an emergency service. They're told that um, nobody else can come into it. They're told that you know all the things that can happen. They also have the email address on their screen as well that they can click should the call fail, then we will phone them on their phone. And if it's something picture-wise, they can send it to us um, and then that will be grand. OK. Um, I take it my everybody can hear all right yeah I've got no problems hearing me sounding good thank you oh that's okay I'm just checking the link there I'm thinking it can't possibly me um so that works really well for us and a lot of the time we'll use a lot of photographic stuff as well so people will phone we'll ask them to send pictures and we use it mainly for skin problems, lumps, bumps, dermatological issues, rashes, infections, toe problems. We have used it for shoulder injuries, knee problems. We do memory testing for elderly if they've got family members who can sit with their relative to go with it. So we do all many mental state exams on that as well. And we do anything and everything that we think that might just people might take that better and you can tell often the admin team can tell on the phone whether when they offer that as a choice that we can either do telephone or video and they're always offered that choice because it gives them access to different things and majority of the time they'll go telephone but those people who go for the video option we have a really high satisfaction rate so mums with kids elderly people people's shoulders the satisfaction rate goes up if they can manage the tech part of it and that's really just our slight problem that we have sometimes is, is that sometimes the individuals text not what they want and our overriding bugbear problem and it has me is is it getting people to use the right browsers i don't know why they don't want to change their browser settings if whether they can or whether they just don't want to but ask them if they've got safari or if they've got chrome often sets a little barrier and a lot of people would just say i'm not changing that i'm not going to do anything different and so therefore a video is not for me so we are trying to work on a way to try and make that a little bit easier for them so that you know and it doesn't matter how old they are because we have that in the younger population are meant to be tech savvy as well it's just some people just don't want to make the change most people windows laptops most people's ipads the video quality is great some of the older phones and some of the Android phones, it's really pixelated. That's why we have the backup email address. That's why we've got the photographs. That's why we'll just say we're going to phone you and change it into a telephone consultation because there's no point trying to carry on. But that's few and far between. And you know that starting off um, when things start to go. Patients really do appreciate seeing us sometimes. And 
At the minute, we're running an advanced access model, same day appointments. Our plan, hopefully, is once our staffing and things start to settle down with the COVID, to go back to using pre-booked appointments. And as Scott said before, our model plan is to go back to using pre-booked appointments, but the majority of them will be video, not face-to-face. -face. We will only have their face-to-face -face for those people who need a physical exam or run around the 25% of those people who need to lay hands on. And most of it should be away from telephone and more video, which will give people better, you know, better outcomes feel happier and that will be the model in the future and then telephones will go back to just the usual advice ones that we used to do before simple things that would go on and then we'll start populating appointments which will much will much much better so we're hoping that that's how we're going to manage things and the problem um, most of the people that we have although it's not a, a substitute for face to face to be honest with you it's probably as good in the majority of cases that you don't actually need to physically touch somebody and I think lots of people find that much easier and with partners working at home because we've got one as long term at home, they, he can dial in from home and actually see people, which I think he actually quite likes because being stuck at home doing telephone triage all the time is pretty soul destroying and actually having a little break. And even when we're doing telephone triage, you know, that list of people going on and on, a little break that you can actually go and have a, an interaction with somebody is actually a nice break and is really probably good for our souls is as good as for the patients. So in summary, it's dead easy to use, you know, nurses use it, our AMPs who were looking after our care homes when, our, the, when the COVID cases had stopped people going, were using it with the care home staff. So we're seeing lots of folk, all in the, a lot of the elderly care home patients were seen doing consultations with them for that, which works really well. You know, we're going to be able to upscale it to do lots of different things in the future, which will be much better than having people coming into the surgery. Um, and when we move to our pre-boot solution, although there'll be a backlog, which is probably a little bit backward step, it will probably do better for our long-term longevity because we can't continue to work on a day-to-day -day advanced access model for, you know, for the future because, you know, we're doing another 100, 120 folk every day, you know, and that gets to become untenable after a while. Um, Satisfaction rates have always been high. It's leading to fewer fallback appointments and comebacks. And I think that's just because of have us, which works well. We're picking up lots of things earlier, particularly odd skin things and things that people are not waiting because they can either, you can see them on screen and then we'll say, good, send us some pictures. We send it off to dermatology, happy days. Um, and the biggest barrier really is just really the browser bit in all age groups. That's the only issue that we have ever had. So I would say that you know, for near me, it's been a huge success for us from day one. We're trying to make more use of it for the future. It will be the future for general practice, I think. I think we all need to just embrace it now and we'll get used to all the little foibles with that. You know, get it widely advertised amongst patients and the press and everything else. This is the future model of how it's going to go. You'll still see your doctor if you really need to, but, you know, having a video consultation is just like being in the room if you don't have to examine somebody. That's me. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. That's fantastic. Really good to hear how you um, were able to kind of get things going and that and that practice amongst staff is key. We've done that with lots of professions now and being the patient and having that near me experience and then turning the tables and being the clinician. That's a really valuable learning experience that many professions have, have benefited from doing so. Um, and again, the suite of options being available as you summarised. Um, and again, great to see that near me is going to be embedded in your future practice, you know, ongoing uh, when we, we kind of return back to some kind of, well, normal, whatever that might be at, in time. So that's great. We're going to just move now to um, Dr. Neil, Neil Silvis, uh, GP partner from South Queens Ferry. And uh, over to you, Neil. Thanks very much, Mark. Um, it was interesting to listen to Scott and Alan there. I certainly would echo quite a lot uh, of what they've just said, and uh, I think you've stolen my thunder for half of my slides, so uh, hopefully that'll not uh, keep me talking too much, but uh, that's us. Um, I think the main thing for me is um, a disclaimer, um, sort of up first, that I'm definitely no near me expert, and uh, as we were saying there a few seconds ago that uh, Alan and his team were just thrown in, you know, given the laptops and told to get going. I think we are very much uh, the, the same with that. So we, from the outset, just joined in and uh, used sort of the time that we possibly could um, to learn new skills and really try to embrace this. 
and a little bit like a practice over the years we've given things a try and um, if they work fantastic if they don't work then uh, we, we basically you know learn from that and try to push on and uh, change it to make it work for us uh, as a practice and a practice population so mark have we got the next slide there sorry and the next one if possible that's great so just as we were saying out why near me so i think we just jumped at it and thought um as most practices felt around the, the turn of the first lockdown that we had a little bit more time to spare when folk were locking themselves away so it was a good time to sort of implement something new um and again probably the staff were quite nervous at the start and as we had suggested before trying to get them uh, engaged in the system made quite a difference uh, going forward because then they were able to sell it to the patients and to their peers, you know, the other receptionists, etc. So we, we, we embraced that, took things forward and by doing that it sort of empowered the staff um, in the reception. So whenever telephone calls were coming through that we, we tended to work it in a bit of a split um, between telephones, face to face and video calls from the outset. But the staff had the ability uh, to change a telephone slot into a video slot or vice versa. So again, whenever patients phoned in, that meant that they were taking a lot more ownership of their, their health in the way that they felt was best to consult. But equally, it gave the staff a good opportunity to educate the patients and uh, you know let them try out the, this new system. Um, because obviously, as uh, Scott had mentioned earlier, there, there's quite a few of these mobile you know gp consults now so it was moving with the times and trying to engage you know the the computer literate population so uh, other other positives there that we find um i think we were trying during the initial covid stage of trying to figure out how many patients should we have in a waiting area at one time so with a practice population uh close to fifteen thousand, you know and up to maybe 15 gps you know consult never mind nurses at one time it can be quite a busy place so we tended to stagger the video appointments throughout our sort of appointment sentence if we run four clinics or surgeries a day and um, each gp would at least get two video consults per per surgery and again that would be at different times throughout that to enable uh, other GPs to see face to face and vice versa. So that slowed down the traffic or the flow through the front door and reducing the, the spread of infection, etc. Um, at its peak. Um, last we note there was initially, I think our, our knee jerk would be that we thought it'd be good for rashes, etc. Um, interesting just here in sort of Alan's viewpoints there and we found that quite a lot um, of the rashes we quite like uh, getting the pictures through an email setting. Um, as well, just to clarify things again, some people I find it remarkable that they can't actually take a, a clear picture. So sometimes that's not even a fallback measure. So uh, yeah, you have to revert to plan C. But um, sometimes the, there'll be a little bit of pixelation again, linking into what was mentioned before about steady Wi-Fi, etc. Um, so having a fallback as a practice is always good and having that as a protocol, how the patients can send it. We also find for our own personal uh, email address in the practice for that, that it was maybe better to send one email per, or one picture, sorry, per email um, to make it really clear and let it come through on time, because sometimes it was, as it filtered through the IT system, it took a long time to arrive in our inbox and the patients maybe were getting a little bit ratty whenever they were waiting for a call back a few minutes later. So again, it would just be trying to tailor that to your own needs. Next slide, Mark, if possible. This is just a very busy slide, but it was just a copy and paste, but feel free to nip along to our website. Um, that This is the blurb that is on our front page and it gives you a few links, um, which Alan was talking about as well. And I think every surgery or team that uses this are, are using a very similar uh, sort of setup. And next, just going on to our positives and negatives. Um, I've hinted at a few of the positives. Uh, so far. Um, I think really at the outset of COVID quite a few patients uh, were thinking that we were sitting drinking coffee and smoking cigars all day long um, and they really wondered you know were we sitting at home or were we in the practice so for them being able to see us um, in our new attire of scrubs etc uh, they, they called it or termed it a proper consult 
So near me, it really engaged that population because I think there was a few eyebrows raised, what are GPs doing, et cetera. So we, we found it was quite a good uh, pushback to them to show that we were still seeing an awful lot of patients and consulting in a proper way. And we, we found that the video consults um, at least take the 10 minutes, you know, that we would be doing for a face to face consult um, as well. And actually grouping not too many of the videos together just in case that they ran over or if there was a few IT issues uh, certainly helped us as well. My next sort of positive was um, it was quite interesting at the old five to six on a Friday evening job for a sick kid. Uh, the parents called through. We felt it was quite useful just to give them a little eyeball because sometimes the story doesn't match the clinical picture. And yes, there, you know, there, I suppose there's no better thing than laying the hand on like a sick child just to check them over. But it was interesting if you see them jumping off the back of the sofa uh, whilst mum or dad's on the video, that sort of reassured me a lot more. And similar sort of psychiatric cases, uh, mental health provisions, some people may be anxious to go out of the house during COVID, etc., or maybe just felt that it was the best way uh, to engage with us. And they give a lot of positive feedback to that and that they could see us and we could actually see their response to what we were suggesting, for instance, titrating up doses of SSRIs or alternatives and you can get that that feedback from actually seeing the patient which was really useful. I think the other thing lots of key workers um, and for ourselves quite a sort of commuting population it was useful for the key workers and commuters to use this uh, on their laptops you know phones etc to try and uh, make contact to save them uh, commuting to work and then uh, trying to work their work work their way back out to South Queensbury to get an appointment. So that was useful. And we, we felt as a team that the GPs were mainly, mainly just thrown to, to near, near me, but as time went on, our nurses wanted to feel part of uh, the party and uh, they've been starting to do a lot more of their asthma, COPD reviews remotely, and even giving out a lot more peak flow meters, etc. that they felt that they could work on inhaler techniques and uh, check and peak flow techniques, etc fire near me, whereas you wouldn't have been able to do that uh, through the telephone. Again, just send something new, something modern. We had to move the times and um, there was no better time for us to give this a bash and uh, see what happens. Uh, and as you engage from the above, it has been quite a positive experience so far. Our slightly less positive ones, the negatives. Um, we have mentioned about some of these commuters. Uh, we've seen people on trains trying to do a near me consult that obviously doesn't work. Um, I've got a good view of quite a few gear sticks of cars as folk have been driving about. So again, it's trying to let the reception team give a, a good heads up to the patients uh, of what's expected, um, you know, for a near me consult um, and how they can make that better for themselves. For instance, as we touched on a minute or two ago about the signal at both ends, having a steady uh, signal, not walking about a room, um, you know, the browsers have already been covered as well. Negatives, you know, again, as we mentioned about rashes, pixelation, but it's trying to find a way around these things. And uh, maybe, maybe medical legally, that's slightly better. Again, that's a practice decision and there's been lots of discussion through the LMC about what you do with uh, the pictures that are sent in. Do you put it into Docman? What do you do? With regards to patient expectations, again, just talking around that, we've had a couple of patients um, have decided to try and consult through near me for gang issues. Now that, that raised uh, quite a few eyebrows um, and uh, I think it's just trying to set rules. So if there's any breast lumps, testicular lumps, gang issues, that that should be streamlined elsewhere and not to a video so that you're not duplicating work uh, for yourselves or for the patient. And apart from that, just an overall summary, very similar to what Scott and Alan were saying. You know, yes, there's been a few teething problems, but uh, we've been working around that and trying to make it work. I think it offers that very modern twist on uh, the, the GP consults and moving with the times. I think that there's no better time to try it. You know, general practice is busy at the best of times, but um, we gave it a go and certainly I don't see us going back. I think it's the more ingrained it gets, the patients give that really positive feedback. Uh, they like it. They like sort of engaging the rest of the team um, to sort of pull together really to take this forward. And from the outset, I think it's the first time in ages where receptionists, nurses, GPs and the patients have been trying out something new at the same time and really trying to make it work for all. So 
yeah, I would definitely give it a thumbs up. You know, you need to give it a try, test it out, and very happy to answer any questions. Mark, over to you. OK, that, that's great, Neil. Thank you very much. That's again super to hear your, your similarities between other people's experiences, but also how you approach that within your own unique practice in terms of you know, giving it a go as, as a new skill, but then <clears throat> having that front of house um, organisations critical and, and also looking at the patient owning uh, their, their journey as to how they interact with you as a, as a, as a practice is really good. And it's great to hear how the wider staff group had, uh, had embraced it as well across professions within your practice. So thank you very much for sharing that. I'm just going to pop up some guidance documents links that I think we're going to put in the chat as well. So these were the documents that Scott mentioned earlier. There's one for general practice and also one for out of hours. And then what I'd like to do now is hand over to my colleague Rachel, who is going to have a quick scan through the, the Q and A's and hopefully got some lined up for Neil and Alan and us to field. So over to you, Rachel. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we've got a question in the chat. Uh, there's been some difficulties engaging with patients and, and getting them to feel confident and aware of near me and use near me. Do you have any tips on, on how uh, GP practices and clinicians can go about engaging patients in near me? Neil, I might start off with you. You yeah, spoke a little a about use of your reception or admin staff. I'd love if you could just uh, continue discussing that. Yes, certainly. I, th I think, you know, from the reception team point of view, they need to be very positive. They need to be sure of what they're telling the patient. I think simplistically even letting the patients go in and have a play about, you know, so that we're instructing them to, you know, go in maybe five, ten minutes bare minimum before their call. So uh, they know that they're sitting waiting, you know, that they're in the right area, um, you know, rather than just worrying about technology um, around that time. I think uh, pulling them, you know, putting the right information on a website, even on our Facebook page as well. We were advertising during COVID that the different types of appointments that we were getting and using. And I think similarly, you know, linking that into the minor injuries units at the local hospitals and stuff here, we're using similar technology. And um, it was showing the patients that, uh, that this was definitely a way to try and go forward. I think as a practice, it was slightly easier for us because we were a younger, you know, population. Uh, we don't tend to have as many elderly patients as some practices. But um, I think I can't remember if Scott or Alan mentioned earlier about uh, actually just trying to get family members um, you know, to engage in it as well and uh, take it forward. I think like anything in a, in a small community, once one person tries it, uh, you know, word spreads fast. So I think sticking at it, keeping going and it will get easier. Thank you, Neil. Alan, do you have anything to add to that? And particularly uh, you mentioned you've got quite an older population. I'm really interested to hear about how you engage that population in NME. Sorry, Alan, you might be on mute. Somebody keeps muting me. You keep muting me and that's that. Thanks very much for unmuting me. Um, yeah, it's all for point of point of contact and admin. So it's, it's admin all the way through. If you can get your admin team on board, if they can be comfortable with it, they can sell anything to anybody, which is just about. And you know, and that's this is the whole point of this is is that if somebody's on the phone and they're off this, and, oh, I don't want to say, don't worry, it's dead easy. Have you got this? Yeah, try this. And because they're going to put them into the reception waiting room to begin with, not only to get the time to wait a bit, but they always get the receptionist who pings up and speaks to them. So they've already got a pre, they've already got a pre appointment book, as in that they have the receptionist going, oh hi. Eh? Oh, it's you. That's nice to know. Oh, all your stuff's working. Oh, that's OK. And if they've got anything, they can go through that with them and try it again. And then they're sitting just waiting for us to come in with that. So it's all to do with the selling and then making sure that 
You tell as many people as you possibly can. We have it on our Facebook, on our website. The website was going daft to begin with when it was all going with that. Everybody will go in the schools on the prescription sides with it. They've got that opportunity. Everybody who contacts is that they have that opportunity. We can give you a telephone call or a video consultation. Oh, what's a video consultation? Well, let's tell you about what a video consultation is. This is what you could do. Oh, I might give that a go. And sometimes they say, I'm not doing that. And then the next time they go, well, I'll give it a go and then you just get a few more people and a few more people then it's the woman round the road went oh I saw Dr Stewart on the telly and then she says to her pal and then before you know it everybody does it and particularly for the elderly as well most of them have got family you know the pandemic kind of blocked a few things for it, but most of the time they'll have somebody who will who be who is in their bubble now who will go along and take their iPad or take the whatever and, and sit with them and give them a little help yes it doesn't work for everybody but staff knowing what to do, staff being comfortable to do it, staff who do it themselves, who phone up and practice with each other, you know, phone up and do silly voices because that's how we did it. We got people phoning up just on spec with silly voices pretending to be some really rude names as well because it was quite funny and, and they enjoyed that and then they found out all the tricks and then they say, well, I can do it. So if they can do it from both sides, you can tell somebody else how to do it. And once they can do that, it's just giving them the confidence to give it a try once. Once they do it once, it's that. Yeah, it's easy. You do it again. Thank you both. There's been a couple of questions around the shared screen function. So uh, have you used the shared screen function when you're having a consult with a patient, such as showing results or talking through resources or showing a video? And, and how does that work for you and your clinicians in your practice? Alan, we'll start off with you. Oh, that was dead easy. Never used that. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Simple as that. Didn't even know it was there. Well, I do know it was there, but it's, it's not the kind of thing that we would tend with our practice population. We don't do a lot of these things that go on with it. Resources, yes, you can do things, but often we will just email them directly out with them rather than share some of the things that go with it. So I'll be honest with you, it doesn't format as any part of our um, consultation model as the shared screen part. Sorry. No worries. Thanks, Helen. What about you, Neil? Neil? Um, very similar. Uh, we haven't really used it um, for that function as yet, but um, if I sort of take a little sideways step, um, the function where more than one person, like one patient can join a call, uh, we use that a couple of times. Uh, for instance, uh, a patient who was deaf and uh, we logged in with their interpreter um, in Glasgow and they were able to sign across on the screen to the patient sitting in their front room. So that worked really, really well for even complex things, you know, where you'd be normally trying to do it over the phone, you know, like say, you know, to organise things to get them in for the appointment. That that was a doddle, really, but I'm afraid I haven't used the other uh, utility yet, so. Thank you. And just for a bit of background, so within the new me platform, there is functionality to share your screen. So this can be quite useful if you do want to share, say, test results or if there's a particular website or link that you want to refer a patient to in terms of an electronic resource. Uh, it's also helpful if you want to uh, point out a particular video or other resources that are available that may support a, a patient. So it is there and available, but just, yeah, I guess it's all about what is appropriate in your setting and um, and what is necessary. And if an email works just as well, then that's perfectly fine. I have an example if it's helpful. Yeah, go for it, Mark. OK, so um, within the AHP workforce, there's a few, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, an orthotist may be issuing somebody with uh, a foot orthosis and what he would what he was doing with near me is queuing up the YouTube videos from the manufacturer so that the patient could view alongside the, the orthotist how to don and doff the, the prosthetics they were using. So it enabled him to stop and start the instructions, but it was from the manufacturer. So it was a really good quality bit of teaching, but it meant that the person didn't have to come in for the fitting. They could do all it remotely with, with the actual manufacturer's instructions and the, and the professional input from the prosthetist as well. So that's just one example. So if you want to bring in another resource alongside your own knowledge, then, then that's where your screen share can come in. Thank you, Mark, for that one. Uh, we've got a question here. Does NIME work much better for pre-booked appointments rather than using on an ad hoc basis during, say, a telephone appointment? 
Neil, what do you think on that? Cool. I, I don't think there's a difference. Actually, um, I, we've got one GP in particular has used it quite a lot that if he's on a telephone call and he thinks that a video is more appropriate, um, he just copies and pastes the link into a text message and sends the link across. Um, again, saving any faffing about at the website or that. Um, and then the patient can link in uh, that way. If they've got enough time, they can just, you know, jump from a telephone to a video. But sometimes you may want to say, look, I'll go on to my next patient and I'll call you back in two seconds if you just sit in the waiting area. And that way, again, it's creating flexibility for the GP and for the patient. Um, but equally, as I was given an example earlier of the five to six duty doc, you know, sick kids scenario, I think it works very well for that. But equally, it works for a routine SSRI review. So I really don't see a difference between them. Thank you, Alan. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I have to agree with uh, have to agree with Neil. It's exactly the same for it. Do, it depends what it depends what kind of service that you're running, which is that I think at the minute a lot of people are running more of an acute onset service. I think some people are doing some pre book I think it's hand and glove. You can swap in for either, which is just that um, it makes lots of sense for us. We do lots of acute stuff, but we would also use it for pre boot stuff as well. So I think it, it depends on the circumstance that you have. And as Neil said, if you're in a telephone consultation, you think actually I need to eyeball this person. You just flip to a video one. The same way as the video is not working, you flip to a telephone. It just gives you a different choice and you can use it for anything that you really, really feel comfortable using with it. And it's just use it's just what individual users like. Lots of our doctors like to um, do video because telephone triage is really tricky to do most of the time. A lot of the other folk would prefer to do some more face to face. So we have a mixture. So we'll see lots of different people will do different things. Some doctors will see lots more face to face. Some will do more telephone. Some will do a mixture of both. Like me, will do video and telephone. And it's an individual preference. It just gives you another choice. And that's the point, the choice for patients, and the choice for doctors, so that you're not worrying on a telephone call that you're not quite sure what's going on. If you can see it and it puts your mind at rest, which reduces your anxiety, that gives less anxiety for the patients as well. So just a great tool all right. Yeah, it's just yeah, a good thing. I, Rachel, I'll maybe just add something to what Alan was saying there, if possible. Um, with regards to, let's say, if a video doesn't work and uh, you do want to switch to a telephone, um, I, I've seen a few GPs uh, using the video with no audio, but they actually ring the patient um, on their headset. And, um, you know, that, that could be for a variety of reasons. It could be my dodgy computer. Um, it could be the patient's. So, um, again, it's just trying to learn how to make things work and not panic if the audio and the video doesn't work at the exact same time. How do I get around this? And it's just thinking on your feet and um, working and um, it works really well that way. Thank you both. And I really like how you said that, oh, it's really just an individual option. It's an option based on the individual patient and their circumstances. And yeah, we really, as a national team, really like to reiterate that it will all just depend on the individual circumstances. So thank you. There's a bit of a technical question here. So on the ground, what equipment do you, you, you use to um, have an EME appointment? What, what's your technical setup like? Uh, Neil? We, we have changed actually since the start of lockdown. We had started now, our, our IT experts could probably tell a lot more, but we, we had started off um, at the outset buying sort of headsets etc from Amazon before they went to £400 for a headset just because every man and their dog wanted one. But um, I am led to believe again with its computers potentially and not near me that there are headsets etc that maybe aren't as good um, for linking into things and we found that there's a lot more streamlined sort of uh, visual and audio uh, output from using um, the new laptops with the screen with the built-in camera and microphone. So then that means that you're not using two or three different sort of pieces of kit at the same time. It's all on the one. Thank you, Neil. Alan, is your setup similar or is it a little different? Oh, exactly the same. It's laptops all the way. So the admin staff are running their old usual Windows 10s with the lovely stick-in cameras and their headsets, which they've used forever, which is fine for them. But for 
all the clinicians, and that includes because everybody now has or should have a laptop for just in case they need to go home. And the laptops work well, so the nurses, the chronic disease nurses and all the clinicians, they will just plug their laptop in. They will probably run their usual desktop for their usual work bit, but all the near me works really well. The cameras are really good, the audio is really good on them. Um, we've got all direct plug-in, which plugs in directly to the server in the office, so therefore you've got a nice stable internet connection and a power sign, and it works by far the best. For, for those people who don't have sort of the laptops, um, my non-expert IT opinion would be to check with your local IT provi provi uh, providers first to see because uh, sometimes the cameras may not be compatible with the old computer that you would have. So just check that first. Thank you, thank you both. There is a question here around staff who are remote working or working from home. I'm not sure if you've got any within your practices who are doing that. Um, how do staff feel using near me working from home and what's that like in setting that work life boundary because they are working from home? Alan, I'll hand over to you first. We have one partner who's been working at home since last February, which is a long time, but never mind. But I think for him, telephone charge can get really dull, really boring. And as, as we discussed earlier, it's really good for him because he can actually see human beings. He has a laptop. He has his plugged into his uh, home Wi-Fi network, as we, we do when we're off, we often do this as well, we, we meet on that. He has got a dongle backup for when his kids are using up all the Wi-Fi for doing their home study, which is the only downside, but there's lots of stuff out there that you can get. I run at home myself, uh, LT internet and on a on a mast, which is because we live in the middle of nowhere, so it's just a mobile phone sim on an LT and the router, which gives us a, a, a mobile internet, basically. So there's lots of different ways to cut it, but as long as your as long as your computer is a decent Windows 10 laptop, you know, near me will work on that. So even if you've got a non-NHS laptop, you know, as long as it's Windows 10 and reasonably modern in the last couple of years, the cameras and the video are as good as anything and will work really well. So he really enjoys it because he can actually see other folk rather than having to phone up us at the end of the day wanting a chat, but we're too busy, so we don't want to have a chat with them at the end of the day. So the only human or other human interaction you get is via video conferencing and video calls, and he loves that. So when he gets on it, you have to fight him off to get to them because it's that he's in there first because he's desperate to speak to somebody different. And although he's working at home, he's got his room, so therefore it's like being in the office being at home. We have been using um, our phone system gives us the opportunity to have an app on our phones, which means that when we phone out using it, it phones out using the subject number. So therefore, it, you could just be in the office. So, you know, for him, when he's doing that, it just looks like your office. Nobody can tell much difference. You know, everybody will can put a, a, a blood screen on the back. It could be anywhere at the end of the day. And I think it's just a different way of working. I think for him, he likes speaking to people, which is just the thing. And he's got that accent so they know that he's it, the surgery number comes up when he phones. Everybody thinks he's at work. Let's smash it. So he likes that. Uh Excellent. And it's good to see that like GP clinicians who are shielding or are working from home can feel involved and feel like they're contributing and, and connecting with patients as well. So that's really nice that Nimi has supported that. Neil, do you have any experiences within your practice? Your practice? Not much, unfortunately. We haven't had any GPs uh, sort of really working from home on, for any prolonged period of time, and we've only recently received sort of the, the new updated laptops. So prior to that, it was the old system trying to remote in, which was very clunky and sluggish. So um, I can't add too much more to that, but maybe the, the question, and it's my personal opinion, just about the home life sort of, you know, boundaries or that using that old phrase during COVID, you know, it's the new norm. You know, we're not the only team that's doing that. You know, your bankers, your whatever are, are doing all this now, that th this is what, you know, the government have been pushing and suggesting that if you can work from home, work from home. So uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't see it as an intrusion into my space, as long as you knew where your boundaries were with regards to times and, and your work that you're not sitting there to midnight uh, trolling through things. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'll hand over to you now just to close. Thank you all for answering those uh, questions. That's great. Yeah, no, that's been super. And just just to add around the whole work life uh, balance uh, side of things, uh, <clears throat> being able to blur your screen as a clinician, as a provider in a waiting area is a feature coming through 
from uh, the software folk uh, behind near me. So, excuse me. So if that helps um, the professional image of wherever you're working, then uh, that that's going to be a feature available to uh, near me providers in in time. So I'm going to just pop in to the Q and A uh, a little uh, link to a survey, <clears throat> which would be great if you could complete. It's only five questions long, should take about two minutes to fill in, and it would just be a great to find out how you found today, how you use Near Me, and what kind of things can the Near Me network support you with in your practice to help Near Me become part of a, of a choice for patients and professionals. And again, just just in summary around, you know, what, what, what's been shared today, we've had we've had such a, a breadth of information across professions and, and across situations within within primary care. And I think just the, the the ability of using a video call for just reducing anxieties, both in patients and staff about making judgments. I can, if I can see something, it's easier to make a judgment than just listening to someone speaking about it. Um, and again, looking at what the, the public and the patients have gained from uh, using video calls from what Scott was speaking about. Um, and also, again, the, the, the cut says Neil's message of, of stick with it, it'll get easier, which is quite good. That's a, one of the take homes from today. Um, and also how, how admin is critical and 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 uh, also Alan speaking about, you know, choice for all, uh, then uh, that's a really key thing. So um, what I will do is just pull up some information here. So there's some uh, websites available to you. We'll put this all in a resource pack for everybody who registered today, not just people who've attended today. So if you've had colleagues that uh, couldn't attend, then we can still get that information out to them. Um, basically, all it uh, remains now is to say thank you to uh, Alan and Neil and Scott for sharing their experiences and speaking honestly about the the positives of using NIMI and also some of the challenges that have arisen that they've managed to overcome and also some of the ongoing challenges that we may need to adapt to and and, and learn to cope with as we as we go forward with trying these new things out with patients. Uh, and again to thank David for running the whole show in the background and Rachel for comparing the questions um, and that's going to be it, I think for us all today. So again thank you very much for joining us. We'll get a recording of this out to you as soon as possible, along with the Q&A answers and the resource sheet. And we look forward to meeting some of you again, maybe at, at another webinar in the future. Thank you very much and goodbye.